Managing capacity is an important factor in any operations plan and any operations strategy. It is a more long-term uh, consideration because capacity usually requires investment in, in fixed assets. So we have to really think hard about what the appropriate capacity for the trajectory of our business is. If we have too little capacity, we lose customers uh, because we can't we can't serve them. If we have too much capacity, we have uh, high costs and, and our value proposition might not uh, might not uh, be fulfilled. So we, we really need to work at getting capacity just right. And we can have variable demand. We can have a bunch of factors which can cause us grief. So that's why we spend time thinking about capacity, capacity strategy, building capacity, which is a long term uh, consideration and managing capacity, which is more of a short term. So what is capacity? Capacity is, is your ability to put customers or products through a facility or through a service scape or, um, or, uh, or, or even a process which with, with, within which you don't have a facility. It is your throughput, number of units, people, you can hold, receive, store, produce, serve in a period of time. So capacity is uh, sort of a number per period of time. It determines fixed costs to a significant degree. It, it determines if demand will be uh, satisfied. And, and there are really sort of three time horizons that we look at for capacity. What do we do today? What do we do in the medium term? And what do we do in the long term? So let's talk about some concepts to, to measure capacity. So we've got different considerations here. The first is design capacity. And design capacity is the maximum theoretical output of a system. It's normally expressed as a rate. So units per hour, customers per hour, customers per day, units per week. And it is uh, you know, sort of the, 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 the theoretical max of number that you can put through. Now, there are, uh, there are other considerations which need to come into play, and that's why we have what's called the effective capacity, is the capacity of a, a, a firm expects to achieve given current operating constraints. So effective capacity is usually lower than design capacity. It might be limited by union contracts that specify the number, uh, number of breaks. It might be constrained that we only have one shift uh, and we have a, a system that can handle two shifts. Um, we might not have our people trained to, to meet uh, design capacity. So effective capacity can never be higher than design capacity, and it is often lower than design capacity as we uh, as we manage our operation. You know, there can be things like shutdowns for maintenance and those sorts of things that that we need to that we need to consider. So let's talk then about some measures of capacity, uh, and the first is utilization. And utilization is the percent of design capacity achieved. So it is actual output over design capacity. So that is a measure of your uh, the degree to which you are effectively uh, taking advantage of the entire design capacity. Now, again, just like with utilization in in queuing models, you don't always want to be at 100%. Sometimes you want some buffer capacity in case demand surges. So it depends on your value proposition. If, 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 if you are a low cost, you want utilization to be as high as you can, you may be willing to accept a lower utilization. If you have surges in demand, you have a high value proposition and you really are uh, wanting to be able to respond to demand as it comes in. So, all else being equal, higher utilization is better, but sometimes we have strategic decisions where we accept a lower utilization. Efficiency is a percentage uh, of the effective capacity achieved. So it is actual output over effective capacity. So utilization is sort of the proportion of the total design capacity that you're using 
efficiency recognizes that you may not be right at design capacity and it's the 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 uh, your ability to uh, to manage within uh, your effective capacity so let's look at an example actual production last week was 148,000 rolls effective capacity is 175,000 rolls Design capacity is 1,200 rolls per hour. Bakery operates seven days per week, three-hour shifts. So then design capacity is seven days uh, times three shifts times eight hours per shift times 1,200 per hour is equal to 201,600 rolls. So we have 201,000 is our design capacity. Our effective capacity, given other constraints, is 175,000. And last week, we produced 148. So our utilization is 148,000 divided by 201,600, just over 73% utilization. So we have, you know, we installed... Uh, we built this bakery that has a design capacity in an ideal world of, uh, 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 of 201, and we're using 73.4% of that capacity. Efficiency is 148,000 divided by 175. You know, maybe we shut down for part of the third shift to clean up or to produce something else. So our effective capacity for rolls is 175,000. So our efficiency is 84.6%. So again, those are pretty good numbers, but I can't tell you absolutely one is better than the other because strategy comes into play here. What is our thinking relative to capacity management? So two very quick and easy numbers to calculate. Uh, expected output is effective capacity times efficiency. So that's what we expect uh, that we will produce in the next week. So uh, 175,000 times 0.75 is the, sorry, is the efficiency of the new line. So we uh, have 131. So we made a change here. I apologize. Times 0.75. 131,000. So that is our expected output given these changes we made in efficiency within the new line. So how do we think about capacity and strategy? Capacity decisions impact all of the key elements that we need to think about in operations management as well as other functional areas of the organization. So uh, marketing, and, and promotions and that sort of thing, uh, or pricing become an important part of managing capacity. If we're under capacity, we might have promotions. If we're over capacity, we might increase prices to try and ration demand. Uh, and so capacity decisions must be integrated into the organization's mission and strategy. If you're going to run promotions and you don't have the capacity to deal with that demand, clearly that's not doing uh, what you want. If you are if your uh, effective capacity is well below your uh, design capacity, you might perhaps have a training issue. So HR needs to come in. So all of these things are inextricably linked as we as we work through thinking about capacity decisions. So what do we have to do to manage capacity effectively? Well, it goes back to forecasting. Uh, if we can forecast both in the short term and the long term accurately, it allows us to develop capacity in a way that uh, that uh, is efficient or effective. Uh, if we are not able to forecast, we could either overbuild or underbuild, and that causes us grief in, in both directions. So forecasting becomes a, a, a vitally important element uh, in capacity decisions. Understanding the technology and capacity increments. We are making financial investments here. Uh, understanding the, the changes that we are expecting in, in technology and investing a bunch in technology that's going to be obsolete very soon isn't necessarily a very good strategy. So understanding the, the increments that we can make, we can't we can't always have nice linear growth in capacity. There are often steps. Understanding 
the technological constraints on how big those steps are. If we're the bakery example that we just had, historic, uh, you know, adding an oven increases capacity by X number of buns. We can't do it one at a time. So understanding those steps becomes important. Finding the optimum operating size. Uh, you know, we hear lots about economies of scale. There can also be diseconomies of scale if we get too big. So deciding on what the optimal operating size is from us, from both an effectiveness in interacting with customers and producing, but also from a cost uh, uh, perspective uh, is important. And it says build for change. And that gets back to this uh, consideration of forecast. If it, in anticipation of growth, uh, you need to, if you are expecting growth, uh, you should be adding capacity and anticipation so that you can deliver on that growth. So thinking about those sorts of things strategically becomes uh, becomes vitally important. So in the short term, we can so, so that's planning strategically in the long term for demand. In the short term, we can do things that that manage demand in in order to uh, more match demand uh, and capacity. So in, in, in times when demand exceeds capacity, uh, we can try and ration or curtail demand by rising, raising prices, scheduling longer lead times so that we can plan more effectively. So in those circumstances, we, might, we will do things that will manage or constrain demand. And in the long term, if this is a uh, a sustained increase in demand, uh, we may also increase capacity. If capacity exceeds demand, if we have excess capacity, costs are higher, we might, as I said before, say that's okay because we, we get the odd surge in demand and these are high value customers and we think it's okay. Uh, but we might also do some things to stimulate the market, run promotions, run ads, grow, uh, distribute to a, a wider uh, market, add products, change products so that we have, uh, we have a, a broader base of demand that utilizes our, our capacity. And these first two points really relate to sort of longer term changes in demand. If we have longer term growth, then we might, uh, then we might build capacity and change prices. If we have longer term uh, decreases in demand, we might think about product diversification, product uh, stimulation, price changes, and those sorts of things. But uh, we may also have seasonal demands. We may have times of the year where demand is much higher than others. Uh, and in those cases, we can run uh, short term or cyclical promotions to try and flatten that demand out. Think of a restaurant as an example, where a seasonal demand might be time of day uh, or or day of the week, uh, and so uh, we uh, we we do we, we run promotions to get seniors out on Tuesdays. I mean, grocery stores often have student days in an effort to balance out the demand and the traffic in the store. So sometimes we do it with a pricing action to divert demand to low demand times, but we can also produce products with complementary demand patterns. And, and here's an example. So this is the demand for jet ski engines. And as you expect, the demand for jet ski engines is highest in the spring and lowest in the winter. And so if we have capacity here uh, to meet this, uh, then we will lose this demand. And if we build capacity to meet this, which are our peak demands, we will have all of this time where we have excess demand and costs that, uh, that we're not covering. So that may be just the, the, the lay of the land and we might decide then to go somewhere in the middle. But another option might be to say, is there a complementary product that we could build uh, that that would uh, allow us to manage capacity more effectively. So here we have jet ski engines and snowmobile motor sales. And what we've got then is a much, much flatter uh, curve where we, if we produce to the top of that, 
we have much lower uh, unutilized capacity, or if we build to the middle of that, we have much lower losses in sales. So that so we can do things to to ration demand or stimulate demand with pricing or promotions. And we can also think about complementary products to, to, to balance out seasonality. So here are some other things that we can do for matching capacity demand, making staffing changes that might be bringing in more staff, bringing in less staff, depending on where we are relative to demand. It could also mean uh, um, building more flexibility or, or versatility into our staff. So cross training them so that if demand is low in one area, we can have those people go to another area. So staffing changes doesn't necessarily only mean hiring or firing. It could also mean training, adjusting equipment uh, so that we have more flexibility, uh, improving processes to increase throughput if we're under capacity, redesigning products to facilitate more throughput if we're under capacity, adding process flexibility, which I talked about in the staffing area, to meet changing product preferences or, or to, to help us adapt uh, to seasonal demands. And in some cases, uh, we just have to close facilities uh, if our demand is not going to be there and, and we need to remove some costs. So there are a variety of, of strategies, both short and long term, uh, that we can implement to manage demand. Then to, to, to wrap up here then, uh, let's think a little bit about how service is different from products. All of the concepts we've talked about up till now work for both services and products, uh, but there are some specific things in the service sector we can do uh, that are a little bit different. And, and from the perspective of demand management, we can run appointments, reservations, or a first come first serve rule to, to, to manage demand, which if we use appointments, we can uh, schedule people when we have the time for them and we don't have people waiting. And we can then increase our utilization by saying, here's when you should come, rather than having them come whenever they choose, maybe being frustrated and then walking away from the line. Reservations do the same thing to send a strong signal about when people can come and when they can expect uh, to be served. So th those, uh, I mean, we can talk about reservations in terms of pre-ordering for products, but these are, th these are things that work uh, very well in the service sector. Uh, so those are demand management where you're either increasing or decreasing or diverting demand to different times. There's also capacity management where we can have full-time, temporary, or part-time staff who come in when we have demand surges. So we can change capacity if we have a, a physical uh, facility by having more or fewer people working at a given time, and that helps us to manage costs. So that is a very quick 20-minute introduction to the concept of capacity management. Thinking about some of those levers, I think, is, is, is important learnings here. What are some things you can do to de manage demand or manage capacity? What are the keys to doing a good job moving forward? You know, long-term forecasting, those sorts of things. And then uh, the concept of design capacity, effective capacity, utilization, and efficiency. I think those are the important things uh, to take home uh, from 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 this uh, short presentation. Have a great day.